Hello, guys. My name is Alex Michlitsen. I am a software engineer at Virtuoso, working mostly on the kernel, containers, and Creo project. And today I want to bring the topic of the problems of checkpoint restoring the fuse mounts uh, because we have this problem uh, for uh, for years and we have not supported uh, this because it's too, too complex and we have a lot of uh, issues here. And this year, uh, uh, my former colleague Vitalia Strosabin and I started to approach this problem and uh, tried to uh, make some design uh, for this and uh, proof of concept for some parts of the implementation. And uh, okay, let's start from the discussing about the ways of handling the file systems in Creo. Creo handles file system using special uh, structure called the first type in the Creo code. And this structure contains uh, several, a few useful callbacks, uh, such as dump, restore, and pairs which is called after the mounting for parsing to do some extra work if, it, if it's needed for a particular file system. And also we have uh, some special callbacks like can mount or is be equal. And uh, let's consider some examples here. For example, we can take the TMPFS, one of the maybe easiest file system to support. In this case, we just need to save the entire file system tree to the image on the dump stage and then on the restore we just preparing the mount and then unpacking the archive to this uh, mount tree and then we restoring the file descriptors and so on. Uh, another uh, thing is the block device based file system. Uh, we don't handle this file system any special way in, on the Creo level because this file system mostly provided as an external mount because uh, this file system can be mounted in most cases only as a root user because some evil person may make, may craft special loop device with special file uh, image <laughs> under this device which can crash the kernel if we try to mount, for example, X4 over this image because, yeah, we have no any... Uh, we have, no, we have no any guarantees about security in this case. That's why we have this restriction. Uh, one of the most important example is the overlay FS. Overlay FS, I'm sorry? There was I, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, if you have any question, just break me. Okay. Uh, and another important example for us is the overlay FS, of course, because it's used by Docker and other container runtimes. And uh, for this particular case, we had to add special callback called can mount, which is uh, only an open VZ fork at the time, but I have plans to uh, to provide some new patch series to overlay FS kernel, which allows to extract some data needed for the dump procedure. But in open VZ kernel, we have these patches and uh, we have it working. And uh, this callback used to detect if all dependencies is resolved before the before we can mount the overlay FS because overlay FS, as far as you know, uses the, some uh, other parts of file system tree. So we need to be sure that all desired mounts already mounted at the time when we want to create overlay FS mount. And uh, a quite weird example, and I think that most complex example is the NFS. It also supported only an open VZ4, but it's of course open source thing. And this uh, this was supported for a for a few years. This work uh, was originally developed by Stas Kinsborski, our former developer. And uh, here we have very tricky way to to support this. Uh, we can't mount uh, NFS, we can't restore NFS mount directly because we have no network at this point of time. And uh, also we have network locking scheme in the crew because of the sockets restoration procedure. So we can just mount NFS directly and uh, that's the problem. And what we can do here, we just mounting some uh, replacement file system uh, 
uh, this, this, which is called SPFS. Uh, we, we lost you for a little while here um, because there was some issue with the room. What was the last thing we actually heard? Uh, we can't uh, mount NFS. Okay. Yes. Can you start the slide again? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's not. It's okay. Yeah, we can't mount NFS because we have no network at this point of time, and also in Creo we have uh, network locking. Uh, because it's needed to the TCP circuits restoration. So uh, there is a lot of problems with that. And uh, the solution here was really interesting. Uh, we mounting specially crafted file system, which is a fuse-based file system uh, called SPFS, uh, stands for Stop Proxy File System. And this file system is it just as, as far as I mentioned, it's a fuse-based file system and the user space daemon of this uh, thing uh, controlled by using using sockets. And uh, we can send the command to this daemon and switch between the modes. And we have two modes here, one called the stop mode, uh, which is the stupid mode when the F each EO which is requested to the, this file system will hang uh, on the few docs inside the user space and on the kernel uh, in the stack, which is waiting for the fuse response for the user space. And uh, uh, I will later uh, uh, inform you why it's needed. And another mode is the proxy. Proxy mode is the simple thing. It just translates all the file requests, all the requests to the, this file system to some another directory. It's like a proxy file system, just transparently uh, allows you to transparently call anything to, to another uh, directory. And uh, first of all, in Creo, we set the proxy mode and mount, mount this file system instead of NFS on the place of NFS, uh, set the proxy mode and performing opening files. And uh, this is why it's important. We opening files, not general way but like a ghost files we just recreate all the files from the scratch but without the contents we only preserving the paths and metadata for the files like flex for file descriptor for example and then we uh, after the uh, file restoration procedure we setting the stop mode for this file system because we uh, don't need anymore to access this file system during the Creo restoration. And then after Creo restore finished and Creo finished execution, a special program called SPFS manager started and uh, freezes the process tree and traverses the process tree and uh, lazy unmount the NFS mount, uh, replaces it with the NFS mount and then traverse all the processes using the parasite and replaces file descriptors uh, from the SPFS to NFS file descriptors. And you may ask me why you need this strange stop mode for that. And that's the answer because uh, when you're uh, releasing the processes after Creo finished, some of process may access uh, some NFS file descriptors. And because of that, as, as we not restored NFS at this point of time, we need to make the process freeze on this IO and waiting for the replacement to the NFS file system. That's why we have this, this special mode. And uh, of course, it's quite obvious that when we are freezing the, mount, uh, the process tree and uh, replace the file descriptors, in this case, the processes gets interrupted uh, by signal and uh, this uh, system calls like read, like write will be restarted. And after we releasing the processes at the end of the whole process, the process will get the desired data from the NFS file system from the kernel. So it's like a quite complex thing, uh, but this is a good motivation for, for talk about the fuse. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, place of mount, rest mount restoration procedures in the, the whole uh, restore scheme here. Uh, first of all, Creo restores the mounts and then uh, tasks and mappings because we need to restore file mappings too, and we have this order of restoration. Uh, and uh, what's the problem with Fuse? Fuse is uh, some way close to the NFS because 
It some fused daemons may also uh, include the network usage, and uh, but there is many more problems with the fuse because fuse daemon is the part of the container process tree, and fuse daemon is the just a regular process, and it can this process may share the, some some memory mappings with other processes. It may use the Unix uh, sockets or network uh, IP sockets or uh, anything, signals and, and things like that. And uh, we need to, we, we just can't restore the fuse mount because we need the daemon for, the, for it. As far as I mentioned earlier, we have the order, uh, mounts first and then tasks. So, but for mounting fuse, we, we already need a task. And that's the recursion. And how to break this loop? Uh, the way to achieve that is to try to make something like the uh, fake daemon. So yeah, uh, we have the, we, we can spawn a fake daemon and uh, then we need to replace this fake daemon to the original one, but how to do that? Consider the fuse mounting procedure from the user space perspective. Uh, if you take a look on the fuse lib or, or any fuse file system, you will see something like this. Uh, the opening of the fuse file descriptor to this device, and then building mount options string for the fuse device with the FD parameter, which is set to the number of file descriptor in the process who opens this file descriptor, the step one, and then mounting and inside the kernel, interesting things occur. This file descriptor, which is basically just and uh, empty at the, uh, at the first step will field and uh, the private data uh, pointer will field with some inf meta information for the kernel. And this uh, fuse device file descriptor will be assigned to a particular fuse connection and will be assigned to a particular mount. And uh, yeah, I have uh, written on the slide the names of the functions from the kernel, okay. these interesting things occurred. And uh, then uh, kernel sends the fuse init request to the user space and the user space should answer to this request. And uh, after that installation is occurred, happened, and the uh, user space may use read or write syscalls on this file descriptor uh, and uh, to interact with the kernel and to implement the file system uh, syscalls. Yeah. Uh, what about daemon replacement? Uh, we can just spawn a fake daemon process at the first step and open the fuse, perform the mounting. And then we can, uh, as far as I mentioned earlier, on the step uh, on the step three after step three, we are getting the uh, ready to use, almost ready to use file descriptor, which uh, connected with the fuse mount. And this file descriptor can be stored some way in the crew. And we have a great subsystem, small subsystem called FD store. This is like the, it's just a Unix socket with the two, uh, it's a, uh, with a pair of Unix socket which connected to themselves. And then we can use it to push the file descriptor to it. And uh, then as we need to use some of file descriptor, we can uh, receive this file descriptor from this storage and use it to something else. And uh, we can utilize this, file, this uh, subsystem to store this valuable resource for us. And uh, once the real fuse daemon task uh, will be restored, we can use the app the store storage to receive this file descriptor and to push it to the real fuse daemon process to with reopen. And then this process will continue uh, waiting on the requests and process these requests. That's uh, the idea of this thing. And we, and yes, and we played with that and it really works. That's a good news for us, but uh, that's not all because we have a lot of uh, other issues. Uh, the second problem is the opening files. As far as I uh, already said, uh, we have the special order frustration like uh, mounts, tasks, and file descriptors. 
And during the opening files, we will accept the fuse mount. But if we have the this fake daemon, it can answer to the uh, with appropriate answers to the request from the kernel. And we need to somehow to modify this fake daemon uh, to achieve the desired files uh, in open state. And uh, uh, let's take, uh, talk a little bit about the, the way. Yeah, we have the special structures in Creo, uh, which describes the file descriptor dump and uh, restore procedures. In this case, we uh, talking about the file disk ops structure, which contains the open callback. And uh, okay, uh, let's imagine that we learn uh, that we learned how to uh, answer to the fuse request from the kernel, and our fake daemon uh, just answers. Uh, with some positive answer to any question from the kernel about this fuse file system and allows opening any uh, paths from this file system. But what's the problem? The problem is fuse inode ID. If you take a look at the kernel internals and the fuse internals, it's really very interesting place in the kernel. And uh, you, you might see that there is special structure called struct fuse inode. And this structure contains uh, the field called node ID. This node ID is like just like an inode ID for other file systems. And it, uh, the difference here is that this ID is used by the user space for daemon uh, to distinguish files. Uh, so when you take in a read or write or any IO or a map on the uh, on the files from fuse, this inode ID will be used by the kernel in the request to the user space. And user space should reply with uh, also with the appropriate ID and uh, use this ID to, uh, as far as I mentioned, uh, distinguish files. So the as far as we understand, the user space daemon saves the information about these identificators, and that's a part of the memory uh, of the daemon process. And uh, fortunately, uh, after investigation of this question, I understood that the, we can control this identificator from the user space because we uh, user space provides it to the kernel from the fuse lookup uh, uh, from the fuse lookup request response from the user space. And uh, but the question is, uh, we need at the dump uh, at the dump step, we need to save this node ID for each file to distinguish the files from the Creo side and uh, inform the, our fake daemon about this inode identificator to make it work correctly with the desired passes. So we need to have a mapping between this inode IDs and passes at the fuse file system. Uh, and yes, we can get this inode ID uh, using, for example, file handles and using the syscall name to handle add uh, because the fuse driver implements the fuse encode fh callback, which uh, uh, at the binary structure of the file handle of the fuse file, uh, it will contain the fuse I know the ID in the, in the, as, a, as a field of this structure. Uh, what about the file mappings? in fuse it's the quite interesting topic because uh, fortunately a map is call uh, which uh, don't doesn't lead to any fuse request to the user space that's good news for us and uh, uh, just generic file map fold uh, kernel callback is used on the vm area operation structure and the fuse file address space operation structure Read, read page callback leads to just to simple fuse read request to the user space. And after a user space answers to this uh, request, it just populates the page cache with the data. So it, it's uh, good for us because we any anyway we need to we need to have some way to, to answer these requests. But of course uh, 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 we don't want to uh, access the memory of these file mappings during the restoration process. So I believe that uh, it's not a problem for us because 
when we spawn the fake daemon and then replace it with the original one we and 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 perform a map uh, we already restored the desired vmas with desired flux in the kernel uh, we don't need to access this memory so the read request will not occur and that's that's okay after we release the processes if someone access this memory the read, uh, the read page callback will be called in the kernel and all will work as needed and uh, unfortunately i am not familiar with modern things like ducks in the kernel and uh, this part of code i was <laughs> was not uh, analyzed yet but uh, maybe in the future i will take a look on that but i think that uh, there is no many problems with that in comparison to the uh, just uh, just uh, generic uh, mappings and things uh, what about dump i'm uh, talking about the restore procedure and problems but i may not mention the problems with the dump stage and we have these problems because the cryo freezes all the process three of the container and fuse daemon also get frozen and the uh, daemon can't answer to any request from the user space but cryo uses stats his call to understand what the file is to uh, understand the flags and things like that and that's a problem uh, we need uh, the my idea here is to create something like pre-dump stage uh, we already have the pre-dump stage in Creo, which is used for the memory purposes because we have the uh, the way to uh, iterative migration and pre-dump is used to achieve that because pre-dump allows you to dump the whole memory and then use iterative uh duty tracking for memory to save the data so save changes of the memory but this is another pre-dump stage for the files and uh, the main idea here is to to make the statsys calls on the not frozen process tree from the externally and then cache this data and after the all the process gets frozen we need some way to uh to check that the data which we cached before the process get frozen uh, is actual at the, at, at the point of the dump because once the, pro once the process tree wasn't freezed uh, some file descriptors may be closed or opened at, at this, with the same number that we, we need to check this so maybe we need to kcmp syscall extension to get some cookie for the files like unique identificators in the user space or think like that uh, because KCMP syscall is great and we are actively using it in the crew uh, to build special trees like for uh, file structure uh, to distinguish the processes to distinguish file descriptors but this syscall only allows to compare two resources at this at, at the point of time uh, but in this case we need to save the cookie for the file and then we need to get this cookie back, uh, for to, uh, at another moment of time and then compare it. Uh, KCMP doesn't allow this, unfortunately. I think that there is some security can, security problems with that because, yeah. Uh, but okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, about status and plans. We, have analyzed uh, many problems and uh, uh, we have the pr proof of concept for things for, for example like fuse daemon replacement it's the out of cryo sync it's just the construction with leaf fuse with uh, two processes one of them replace another daemon and the test which access this fuse file system and uh, uh, we need to write some initial implementation for some super simple file uh, fuse based file system and uh, i almost sure that there are many problems which is not noticed by by me and by, by me and vitali and uh, uh, we will be happy if, com if the community or someone wants to help or uh, to brainstorm this thing because it's quite interesting and also yeah we need to support uh, we need to talk about the fuse ktl file system support because it provides a lot of uh, uh, metadata about the fuse mounts 
and uh, the user space processes in the container may open this uh, fuse ktl file system and this is also a problem uh, and i am not analyzed uh, a lot this and also we have fuse fuse block device based uh, mounts or or cus but yeah that's another topic and the, uh, another interesting question is the migration between different hosts with different kernel versions because the Fuse protocol provides us with some uh, ABI guarantees and uh, the in-kernel implementation of Fuse may have different versions and user space should uh, check uh, during answering to the Fuse init, Fuse init request, user space may check this version and uh, check that it's possible to answer to these new formats. And we also need to think how to provide the com compatibility and guarantees here for the user, because if we are uh, using the fake daemon, we can answer with uh, incorrect version. For example, the original daemon uses version like six. Uh, this is just random number like six. And for example, our Fuse uh, fake daemon answers uh, version seven, which is the kernel version, Fuse version, for example. In this case, uh, we get a problem because uh, once we replace our daemon with a real one, uh, we may meet some problems because kernel doesn't know that the daemon was replaced. And uh, possibly we may need to, uh, uh, to inform kernel somehow about this. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Uh, Thank you guys for your attention. I am happy to join this conference. Unfortunately, only virtual this year because of the we, Pavel and I failed to get our visas this year. Uh, and uh, thanks for conference organizers, uh, speakers, and attendees. Uh, thank you guys. I am ready to answer questions. Thank you. And yeah, it looks like uh, Andre's got something for you. <clears throat> Thank you for this talk. Uh, I have a few questions. The first question, can we use SPFS to avoid all this fake daemon stuff? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. But speaking honestly, the SPFS is the quite complex thing. The reason for that is, uh, let, me, uh, let me provide with some example. For example, in Creo, we have support for restartable sequences, yeah? But <laughs> because the SPFS manager does almost the same thing as a Creo, we also need to support restartable sequences in the SPFS manager. And from my point of view, that's the problem because we're duplicating a lot of code in the SPFS manager like Creo does. We need to, uh, be, uh, and Creo is it's quite hard thing and SPFS manager is also very, uh, has very complex code. Not so complex as Creo, but uh, also complex. And uh, another another uh, argument here for SPFS, uh, more more maybe maybe better uh, answer is that uh, why SPFS manager helps NFS because SPFS manager just replaces the NFS or the SPFS mount with the NFS. But if we are talking about the uh, fuse daemon replacement. We need to uh, provide some some. We need somehow to to freeze the fuse daemon after Creo finished, and uh, not only replace the fuse mount with a new one, but we also need to provide the fuse device file descriptor to the fuse daemon inside the container. And I'm not sure that we can um, do it safely. Uh, Maybe there is some way, but that, that's really a great point, but uh, I need to think about this. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. uh, the next thing, it's not a question, it's just the issue what I see right now. When yes. we dump uh, file mappings, we don't dump the memory in this file mappings because we expect that kernel will just save all data to the disk and we will get the data on the destination from the file system snapshot. In case of use, we will freeze the container, so it means the kernel will not save dirty pages from these mappings, and we will need to handle this case somehow. 
I mean, we have a file mapping and we will just change a few changes or a few pages and then mm -hmm. this container. So, so these changes will be still in the memory. The right if, 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 it, if we change, okay, we are talking about the fuse file mapping and the user space, yeah, and the user space changing this memory. Just touch some pages, just, uh -huh. just write something in this memory. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we freeze this process tree. So some data is still in the memory. It, it, it was not saved on the fuse file system yet. Okay, it's interesting, but because as far as I understand, the we we have a page fault on the page mk write with a page mk write callback, and these changes to the file mapping should be propagated to the fuse fuse daemon in the user space. Maybe I am not correct. It can be delayed. I mean, it's a uh, write back. Uh, ah, understand, understand. So uh, you uh, uh, you thinking about the some way to flush the pending IOS to the fuse daemon before the freezing, before freezing, yeah? I'm not sure that we were able to do this because we, in this case, we will need to freeze everything except fuse daemon. Mm, yeah, that's, that's also the problem because fuse daemon may connect it with another processes. Yeah, then call yes. scene, yeah. wait when it will be completed, but yeah. Yeah. we are both part of which process just handles this fuse mount. Yes, 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 yes. Maybe it's easier just to save dirty pages, but I don't know how we will find them. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. It's 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 really great great uh, point, and uh, yeah, that's why I'm I have not analyzed the right scenario here and this thing with buffers. Thanks a lot for this point. I I think we can discuss about this later. Uh, Yep. Thanks. Because it's, yeah, the thing you came on when you've got your file system running from within the same set of tasks that you're trying to dump. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for the talk. Thank you very much for for the questions. Um, we are now at uh, lunch break time here.